Welcome to the October Planning Board uh, meeting, October 15th, I should say. Uh, we have some <coughs> correspondence in front of us that uh, need a couple of minutes for our members to get caught up on, so we could hold up for a minute.
You have in front of you the uh, minutes of the previous September 17 meeting. Are there any corrections or omissions? Do I have a motion for acceptance? In? So I'll move the second. Second. Aiden seconded. Uh, all those in favor of the minutes being approved for the previous 17th meeting, show by raising right hands. Minutes are approved and accepted unanimously. <clears throat> we have in front of us some correspondence that has arrived. Uh, a letter from Richard A. Robinson regarding the proposed amendment for Cross Hill subdivision. We have a letter from Petroselli Martin and Haddo regarding Blueberry Ridge subdivision. We have a facsimile from Bernstein, Shaw, Sawyer, and Nelson regarding proposed Blueberry Ridge subdivision. The first item on our agenda this evening is the Cross Hill Lot 55 subdivision amendment request by Cross Hill LLC represented by Stephen Parkhurst for an amendment to the previously approved Cross Hill subdivision to replace lot 55 as designated affordable lot with lot 71 amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Discussion regarding this proposal. Just based on my review of the submission, it seemed to me to be a reasonable request, and I do note that both of the lots in question back up. It appears they both back up into open space, so it would appear that both lots uh, would have that desirable uh, attribute. So I'd be in favor of granting the request. Any other comments or concerns? There was one complaint raised about the change in the lots, although there was not really any reason given, so I certainly support what Mr. Sherman said. Somebody else? I'd like to propose a motion. Certainly. I have a motion for the board to consider, to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and material submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stephen Parkhurst on behalf of the Cross Hill LLC for an amendment to the previously approved Cross Hill subdivision to change the designated affordable housing lot from lot 55 to lot 71 be approved. Motion's been made, is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please show. Motion, motion carries unanimously. Second item on the agenda this evening is the Flocatulis uh, private access, access way permit request by Costas and Lisa Flocatulis for a private access way permit to create a second lot at 142 Mitchell Road on uh, map U34-18, section 19-7-9 private, ac private access way permit in public hearing. If you'd like to bring us up to date on any changes that you have. Sure. Now, Bob Metcalf of the Mitchell Associates, representing Mr. and Mrs. Flock uh, I'll go over some of the changes that I addressed at the last meeting, but just to bring it up to speed. Uh, these are comments received from uh, staff on September 17th. 
Uh, there's a request that the existing conditions plan as well as the proposed private access way have a stamped uh, survey uh, and signature on the plan. That has been completed. Um, the other item was a site detail for a sewer cleanout and sewer connection, and those details were added to sheet three of the package. Uh, town engineer had, had a uh, concern regarding how the drainage was going to be handled along Mitchell Road, and we've clarified that. Uh, his biggest concern was the location of the private access way in regards to the uh, right-of-way improvements that were being proposed as part of the Blueberry Ridge subdivision to make sure drainage. One was going to work with what was being proposed as well as if the improvements don't occur, that drainage will be added adequately. Uh, the other item was location of the existing fire hydrant and uh, that had fallen off the survey somehow during the review of the plans and that hydrant has been located on the plan. Uh, there were a couple of other questions from the town engineer in terms of regards to where the first 50 feet of pavement is to occur and that has been revised to show from edge of existing pavement on Mitchell Road in 50 feet. The other comment was uh, regards from the engineer in terms of landscaping between the proposed two lots and at this point, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Flock told us prefer not to actually show a planting plan on there. They will be doing something, but they're not sure whether it be a combination of fence and or uh, planting, but something would be uh, done at some point when the lots are sold off. Uh, the other question uh, from the town engineer was to show all radii and all the, uh, the radius locations, and those have been added. And let's see. The other was to add a note to the plan regarding the location of the temporary construction access, and that note has been added to the plan. Uh, there were some follow-up comments from Maureen, uh, revisions to the plan. One was to add the name of the road, Delphi Road, to the plan. That has been done. Uh, Maureen had also spoken to us in regards to providing some additional buffering on the rear of this lot. Uh, with the adjacent Blueberry Ridge uh, Road, and we have added 11 uh, hemlock along that side to provide additional buffering along the back side of the proposed house location and that of Blueberry Ridge. And the uh, Declaration of Covenants with respect to road maintenance, uh, an executed copy of that declaration was submitted to Maureen today. And I believe that covers uh, all the staff comments from the last two reviews. Thank you. At this time, we have a scheduled hearing. Uh, so I'll open the hearing to anybody that uh, has interest to talk about this project. Uh, if they come forward to the podium, and I guess there's no one here at this time that's ready to discuss this subject, so I'll close the hearing, and uh, we'll get into our discussion. The, uh, there was a comment um, that the applicant should consider buffering the site, and, and I understand that uh, at this point you don't want to specify what would be used, but um, my concern is that if this is approved without any type of requirement for buffering, then um, there, there, we would have no way of, of uh, enforcing that there be some sort of buffering between the property lines. Uh, would you have any objection to condition that buffering be provided? Between At the, the time and when the building permit is taken? Yeah. If that's feasible, I don't think you have any problem with that as far as the condition of approval that the time the building permit is taken out and escaping or some sort of buffering would be provided. I don't know. If I, I don't want to confuse things, but um, Mr. Metcalf has just handed me a plan that I can share with anyone um, that he's tried to address proposed conditions. And the plan has the name Delphi Road on it. He's also shown on the plan 11 Canadian hemlocks that run along the back side of the house, right where his mm -hmm. pen is right now. <clears throat> so if. if um, if you find that is an acceptable buffer, we already have something on paper that you could reference as your condition. 
That, that's fine, as long as there's some sort of buffering in the approved plan. Otherwise, we would have no, no way of enforcing that. And I normally don't, I normally discourage you from trying to approve things you've just seen, but, you know, it's fairly clear you could reference the plan that's been submitted this evening as the plan that has buffering. All right. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. On the issue of buffering, does the does the plan also have buffering along the access way itself? What's existing along this side is it, this is part of the parcel that is uh, scheduled to go to the town. It's part of a conservation easement. It's all wooded along this side right now. There's a lot of paper rustling, so I didn't quite hear what you said. Is, is there buffering along the access way to the right there? There's uh, nothing proposed. It's what's existing. Okay. This is part of that conservation portion of the Blueberry Ridge subdivision, and this is all wooded along this section okay. of the property. So there's a pre-existing buffer? Yes. Well. Okay, thank you. Question from Maureen. Has there been any other commentary and or opinions expressed given that there was no participation in the public hearing? From members of the public? Correct. No. No. Okay. Questions or comments? The uh, application appears to meet the private access way standards, uh, which are fairly clear, so I certainly wouldn't have any problem with it. Thank you. Okay. I'm do a motion. Uh, ready to take a motion? I'm ready. One question before you do that. In the proposed motion, condition number two, I believe, is satisfied. And Maureen, has the maintenance agreement been recorded or just signed? It's been signed and submitted. It's so condition one, it has been signed. It has not been recorded. OK. Maybe we can keep it as is, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> um, motion for the board, findings of fact, number one. Costas and Lisa Flacatulis are proposing to create a second lot located at 142 Mitchell Road, which requires review under Section 19-7-9, Private Access Way Standards. Number two, the maintenance agreement which runs with the land is required to provide for long-term maintenance of the access way. Number three, the access way will serve two lots and therefore needs to be named to comply with the address and ordinance. Number four, the application substantially complies with Section 19-7-9, Private Access Ways, and Section 19-8-3, Resource Protection Regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Costas and Lisa Flacatulis for a Private Access Way permit to create a second lot located at 142 Mitchell Road be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the maintenance agreement be signed and recorded. Number two, that the plans be revised to add the name Delphi Road to the access way. And number three, that there be no issuance of a building permit or recording of the approval until the above conditions have been met. Can we hear a second? Can we? Can we should put the date today based on the plan of the material committed 10 15 2 because it shows the those hemlocks. 
You want the date of the plan itself? Well, if we don't put the date of the plan, then, then the discussion we just had about the buffering doesn't. Well, the question is, do you put today's date or the date of the plan? I don't know if they're one and the same. Well, the date the plan was. How do, how do we identify the plan, I guess, is well, the question. They were, they were submitted just now, so I think 10 15 02. Okay. Um, so we would amend the motion. Let's see. <coughs> Barbara, where were you? Okay. So we would amend the therefore clause saying be it, be it ordered that based on the plans submitted on October 15th, 2002. And the rest of the paragraph would remain the same. Motion's been made. Do I hear a second? Motions made and seconded. And any further comments or any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to suggest with Mr. Seraldo and Ms. Schenkel's consent that we strike condition two as it has been satisfied on these plans that we have before us. It's already in. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Just we're asking them to do something they've already done. So for clarity, I thought we should strike it. That's fine. That's indeed correct. Delphi Road's on the plan submitted today, and there's the, the hemlock tree buffer as well. Okay. So both number twos. You agree with that? Yep. So the motion will be to strike both number two comments, conditions, I should say. Any other, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please show by raising your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. You're welcome. Final item on the agenda this evening is Mr. Joseph Fristacci is requesting final subdivision review and a resource protection permit for Blueberry Ridge, a lot 19 subdivision located off Mitchell Road. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 16-2-4 major subdivision review and section 19-8-3 resource protection permit. like to uh, bring us up to date on any changes to the plans? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is David Camilla. I'm a civil engineer with Land Use Consultants, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Mr. Joseph Tristashi, who is also here this evening. And um, I'd also like to uh, introduce uh, Mr. Richard Manthorne, who uh, has uh, taken a, a brief uh, break from his uh, retirement in Florida and uh, come back for this evening's uh, meeting. He, uh, he actually goes a lot further back with this project than I do. I believe he was involved in this back probably eight or so years ago when this started. So he is the surveyor and engineer of record. And uh, any questions 
um, that uh, pertain to his, uh, his field of expertise and his issues, I'm sure he'll be uh, happy to respond to. Um, as far as the changes we've made since the last meeting, we, uh, we had some comments from the town engineer and also from the, uh, the town staff. And uh, we've, we've added a few, a few notes to the plans, um, one being the, uh, the standard note, which uh, is, uh, is on, uh, I believe it's on the first sheet. It's note number 11, which, which uh, has to do with the sale of lots um, or construction on the site prior to the performance guarantee being filed. Um, and on that same issue, um, Mr. Fristashi has, uh, has requested that that performance guarantee um, be waived until the, uh, the time of actual construction due to the fact that uh, there may be a delay on this project um, until spring construction and the, uh, the 90 days would, uh, would, would expire before then. So we would like to record the plan within the 90 day period but um, file the performance guarantee when, uh, when construction is actually scheduled to begin. Um, we've also added a note on sheet number 11 that um, basically states that either the applicant or the lot owner will choose to install either the landscape buffer or the fence but that one or the other must be installed on all of the lots that, uh, that have buffers. Um, we, uh, we, we had questions about the, uh, the drainage at the end of uh, Charlotte Road that have come up throughout this process. Um, we've, we've gone on record stating that we didn't feel that it was necessary to, um, to go to any special measures to deal with those, but um, since the last meeting and since our filing of the DEP permit, these, these questions came up again and uh, so we did go out and survey the area and based on the survey, it was still rather inconclusive. Um, it, it, it's relatively flat in that location and so to, uh, to resolve the issue and uh, move on, um, we agreed to put a berm at the end of Charlotte Road, basically um, running the entire length of the, um, the lot line basically up against the, uh, the fog and the Sawyer residences. It's basically a one foot earthen berm that um, will prevent any water that might potentially leave our site and go into the South Portland side. Um, we'll redirect it and we have also added another inlet to the storm drain system between lots 12 and 13 so that um, it's very similar to the the, the inlets that are between all the other lots and that will then be graded so that any, any stormwater in this vicinity behind lot 12 and 13 will be directed into the storm drain system, go to the detention basin and then eventually outlet to the culvert um, under Mitchell Road. Um, that required a, a, a re, re run of the uh, stormwater calculations. Those were in the packet given to you um, with this submission and uh, basically they changed not very much but there's a little bit of an increase in terms of the amount of stormwater going to the system. It still um, meets the standard. We do detain all the, um, the two 10 and 25 year storms and the, the, um, the, the flow is reduced for all of those storms. Um, the DEP also some issues came up that um, we, uh, we addressed, one of which was um, each of the detention basins, we had uh, additional soil test pits um, performed by Sweet Associates. And uh, there was a question as to whether the detention basin being right next to a wetland would have some impact on the wetland. Um, so what, uh, what Sweet Associates recommended, and we did do, and it's on the plans, um, I, uh, I believe it's on sheet 12 where they show cross sections of these uh, detention basins. We're proposing to put a clay liner on the, uh, the bottom of the detention basin so that if there's any groundwater that might conceivably weep into these basins from underneath the, uh, the wetland, this will prevent that from happening so that it won't draw down the water table um, and uh, dry up those wetlands. Um, we were also asked to uh, provide a, uh, a storm drain profile of the storm drain in Mitchell Road, which we have done. That is now sheet 14 in the plans that you have. I think it's the last sheet in the set. And um, we also um, 
made a provision to connect an existing culvert that was in Mitchell Road that is nothing to do with our project, but it, it goes into the same culvert. So we, um, we made, made it clear on the detail that that 15-inch existing culvert will be connected to the structure we're going to put at the end of the culvert that goes under Mitchell Road and uh, account for all of the, uh, the storm drainage in that area. Um, and Sweet Associates also um, verified the accuracy of the wetlands that are shown on these plans. There was a question about when the wetlands were, in fact, mapped. And there was some confusion about earlier mapping that was done for the, um, the Rosewood subdivision and then the work that was done for this subdivision. And they confirmed that they had done this recently within the last couple of years. And they also rewalked it and reconfirmed that um, for, the, for the DEP uh, review. Um, a few other... Um, minor detail things. There's a calculation now on the recording plat, which is sheet one, I believe, in the set that, that states that 86% of the open space is uplands, and uh, there's a requirement, I guess, that 33% at least of any open space be uplands, so we're, we're well in excess of that uh, standard. And we also um, noted that the, the wooden boardwalk that uh, is detailed on sheet 13 is going to lead to the uh, the open space um, is uh, is is resting on pressure treated timbers. Um, we had just shown ordinary um, logs, I guess, underneath. We're going to make sure those are pressure treated so that they can stand the uh, the moist conditions. Um, we also um, in in the comments for tonight's meeting, I guess the uh, I, I think it was the police chief asked that we put a stop sign at the corner of Red Oak and Fernwood Roads, and I believe. There's no problem with that, as far as I know, that, that we're agreeable to that. And then there was also a question about um, replacing what would normally be road gravel under the esplanade with um, some sort of topsoil so that the trees that are planted in the esplanade would have a better chance of surviving. I, as, as far as I understand, that there's no problem with that. Um, and uh, as far as the DEP permit itself, we hoped that we would have that in hand this evening. Um, we've been working up until today and talking with, with um, the staff over at DEP. Bill Bullard is our project analyst, and based on a conversation today, he has resolved all of his questions and issues, um, and the permit has been sent to Augusta for signatures. So it's, it's now just going through the bureaucracy. All of the technical issues have been resolved. They're, um, They've signed off. It just needs the signature of the uh, commissioner to be official, so we won't get the permit until it's actually signed. So as soon as we have that, um, we'll make that available to the board. Um, and with that, I guess um, I'll uh, turn it back to you for questions. Um, I think that's all the, uh, the revisions, at least the ones that, um, that I have on my list. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Mr. Camilla, the, based on your verbal conversations with the staff at the DEP, will the permit that you expect to receive cause any alteration to the plans we see in front of us? No. The, the plans that you see are the same plans that they have before them. Um, it's, it's the identical set. So we submitted after we were fairly certain that um, they were happy with it. Um, so everything we've been doing has been just discussing technical issues, which. Um, which could have had a bearing on the plans. Fortunately, um, they agreed with us in terms of our interpretation, and uh, so we didn't have to make any more changes. Thank you. Does that include the berm that you've added? Yes, that was on the plans. Uh, that's been on the plans for some time. Um, these. Uh, you know, it's been, I guess, the last time we were here, I think, was in July. So it's um, been almost three months since, uh, since we last met with you folks. And uh, we, uh, I think the firm has been on the plans for probably a couple of months now. And it's been in the DEP's hands. Uh, it's just uh, things move slowly and take time. And uh, so it took longer than we thought to, uh, to complete the process. <coughs>
Camilla, I just want to be sure I understand uh, that this has been addressed, and I believe your follow-up letter uh, does address the issue, but in the letter of September 13th, 2002, addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Sawyer from uh, Steve and Bushy, uh, the issue of the runoff going towards Charlotte Street is of a major concern. Is it correct to say that the, the firm will adequately deal with that issue? Is that how you respond to that issue? That's correct. That, that is the sole purpose of that firm is to preclude the possibility that any stormwater from the site on our side of the, pro of the, of the town line would flow over onto the South Portland side. Um, and we are also going to put an inlet in between 12 and 13, so there'll be a, a, a swale that will be graded to that inlet. So any water that does end up in the backyard here will be directed around and into that inlet. Um, what happens now is it just sort of sits here until it ponds to the level that it flows into that catch basin at the end of Charlotte Road. And that was that's sort of been the bone of contention all along. Um, you know, our, our position has been that that's what happens now. It always has flown in that direction um, so that there was really no, no reason why it couldn't continue. But because this issue was, um, was not going to go away, the only way to really address it was to, to preclude that from happening, and so we put the berm in. Um, so now it can't. Whether we you know, had a right to or not, um, we've, uh, we've decided to, to take the direct approach and, uh, and divert it. So it is going to stay in Cape Elizabeth and, and will not flow into South Portland. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Jones, having uh, examined this project for a number of months now and taken input both through public hearings and in writing, um, I believe both the board and the developer have been responsive to all the input we've received. And unless there are other questions from the board, I'd like to see us begin considering and voting upon the findings. Any objections to the uh Let's proceed. I'd like to offer a motion for the board to consider, which using the procedures that I understand will be operating with tonight, we'll have a number of findings and we'll have a discussion and vote on each of them individually. Uh, finding number one, Joseph Prestacci is requesting approval for Blueberry Ridge, a 19 lot subdivision located off Mitchell Road which requires review under section 16-2-4 major subdivision review and section 19-8-3 resource protection standards. I move that we accept that finding as written. Second. The move for that finding has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? And hearing no discussion, I will raise it to a vote. All those in favor of that finding, please show by raising your right hand. Finding number one carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, I'd be glad to keep going for another finding or two, and then okay. let someone else pick it up. Go right ahead. Two, the Planning Board finds that it held one workshop and nine regular meetings, including public hearings held on December 18, 2001 and on July 16, 2002. I move that that finding be accepted as written. Second. The finding has been moved and seconded. All those, uh, any discussion regarding that finding? And I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor? Well, I'd like to discuss for the record, if we could, this issue of the setbacks because um, I'd like to review my understanding of what is allowed by us. Um, if I may, I think that will come up in a future in one of these findings. Okay, sorry. It'll make more sense at that point. <laughs> Confident the bit, I know. Um, any other further comments? Then I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of finding number two, please show by raising the right hand. Finding number two carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, I further move that we approve finding number three as follows. The Planning Board finds that the Zoning Board of Appeals at its meeting on October 23, 2001 did reduce the side yard setback for lots in Blueberry Ridge subdivision to 15 feet and concurred that other setbacks could be adjusted by the Planning Board as long as the minimum setback of the underlying district is met. 
Second. Finding number three has been moved and seconded. Is there any comments or any questions? I would like to uh, make one comment that uh, it was noted in a correspondence from um, Mr. Crawford today regarding um, his note that the, that the Cape Elizabeth Appeals Board denied the request. Um, it, it wasn't really denied. I just wanted to let you know that it, that it was remanded to the planning board to make that decision, I believe. Is that correct? I would, I would like to defer the answer to that question to Mr. Parkinson, who attended that meeting and I believe provided legal advice to the zoning board. Yeah. Do you want to, would you? For the record, Derwood Parkinson uh, representing the town tonight. Uh, I did, in fact, attend the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, concerning that issue, and it was the board's determination that it was not there within their jurisdiction to consider matters regarding uh, distances from building envelopes, that that would be within your jurisdiction under the open space uh, provisions of your ordinance. Thank you. Any further discussion on finding number three? And I'll, finding number three has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please show by raising their right hand. Number three passes unanimously. I'm happy to do uh, uh, finding of fact number four. Uh, the applicant has opted to design the subdivision in accordance with the open space zoning provisions. Section 19-7-2, which provides for development standards in the RC district that promotes compact neighborhood development in conjunction with a substantial area set aside as permanently protected open space. Do I hear a second? Mr. Chairman, I second. The uh, finding number four has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I, my only comment would be that it's certainly consistent with what uh, the ordinance and, and the town and this board has been trying to do in the URC district in terms of uh, development for allowing for open space and uh, compact neighborhoods. Any further comments? I would echo, echo Mr. Seraldo's comments. This, this particular parcel of land seems to be tailor-made to have open space preserved for the use of all local townspeople and cluster housing to take advantage of the lay of the land. Thank you. Any further discussion? Finding number four has been moved and seconded. All those in favor show by raising their right hand. Number four passes unanimously. Chairman, I'll proceed with uh, proposed uh, finding of fact number five. Uh, the board finds that under section 19-7-2A2 and consistent with the advice of legal counsel and letters from Michael Hill dated May 20, 2002 and from Durward Parkinson dated September 19, 2001 and February 7, 2002, open space zoning dimensional standards can be modified by the planning board as long as the minimum dimensional standards in the RC district are met. Finding number five has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? There's been a lot of discussion about the building envelope that is mentioned in the open space standard. And I would like to read one section so that it goes on the record. Under section 19.7-2, which is the open space zoning, uh, A2, it says other districts. The first sentence reads, in the residence A district and residence C district, and this project is in residence C district, 
the provisions of this section shall be optional, which means that to me, and Maureen, perhaps you can clarify this, that the building envelope listed in the open space zoning, which talks about 50 feet from any other building envelope, can be modified according to the discussion in the RC zone, which only requires a 20-foot rear yard setback, which would effectively reduce the setback between the two lots to 40 feet. And that does, this project does meet that requirement. I, I believe, based on what our attorneys have advised us, that in fact the board does have the authority to adjust the building envelope setback as long as they do not adjust it to a point where they bring it below what the underlying setback would be in the RC district. With that said, I would like to make one correction. I've, stated, I've, I've cited a date here for a letter from Michael Hill, and I really don't know where I got that date, but the correct one, instead of 520.02, should be 8, August 11th, 2000. I apologize for that. Two or 2000? 2000. 2000. I would just simply like to revise my motion to reflect that correction. Any further discussion? I would just add, Mr. Chairman, that the, the same part of the ordinance that Ms. Schenkel cited also uh, cites the reason why this is allowed is to um, permit innovative approaches to housing and environmental design. And in my view, that's exactly what this does, and which is why using the underlying setback makes sense. Thank you. Any further comments? Hearing none, I'll raise it to a vote. Uh, finding number five, all those in favor show by raising their right hand. Unanimous. Sure, I'll <laughs> do one more. Uh, number six, based on section 16-2-4, subsection C-8 of the subdivision ordinance and the longstanding practice of the planning board with prior subdivision approvals, the planning board finds that it may grant a conditional approval subject to the submission of written evidence of state approvals and final revisions to plans. In the case where a conditional approval is granted, no construction of the subdivision is permitted until the conditions have been satisfied. Finding number six has been moved. Do I hear a second? Mr. Second. Chairman, I second. Finding number six has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? It's certainly been, in, I've been on the board for two years now, and it's certainly been my experience that this has in, been, been indeed the practice of the planning board. Mr. Chairman, further in accordance with Mr. Sherman's comments, I've been on the board for approximately nine years, and this matter is very common. And for clarification's sake, if I think the only the only uh, unfinished business that, that really applies here is the DEP permit. If the permit, for some reason, came back with conditions, unexpected conditions that would cause a modification of the plans, the applicant would have to come back anyway for a revision. So, presuming that the, the permit is approved with the current plans, then we're not doing anything untoward. Any further comments? Then I'll raise finding number six to a vote. All those in favor, show by raising it right hand. Number six carries. Seven A. I'm happy to start with seven. Finding number seven. The board makes the following findings in accordance with the subdivision review standards in section 16-3-1. 7A, the board finds that the proposed roads are designed in accordance with the subdivision road standards which were developed to promote roads with a neighborhood character consistent with a comprehensive plan. The board finds that Red Oak Drive should be extended to the neighboring Bullis and Brown properties creating public road access to these existing lots in Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. 7A has been moved. Do I hear a second? Second. 7A has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to ask uh, town planner to comment on the uh, correspondence addressing the ownership of the last 50 feet and that easement where Red Oak, Red Oak Drove Drive connects to the vacated Edgewood Road. Uh, certainly. Uh, 
what if this was well in a brand new subdivision uh, the board and the town would actually require that there be a turnaround at the end of a dead end road to facilitate snow removal and all the other things that public works needs to do on public roads as well as to facilitate better traffic uh, traffic circulation um, Red Oak Drive is legally a dead end road um, but it is there is already there a pre-existing private easement uh, that is owned by the town I had spoke uh, spoke with the developer about actually incorporating that easement area into the right-of-way of Red Oak Drive and you have before you tonight a letter from the attorney representing the applicant stating that they no longer have control of the property however we still have our easement with all the rights that we would have if it was in a right-of-way uh, for that reason I am not recommending to the board that you need to attach another condition to the approval that states that that turnaround has to be turned into a public right-of-way because I can't find any additional advantage that you would derive from that that you don't already have with your existing easement. Any questions? Thank you. Can I paraphrase in layman's terms? So what the town needs in order to get snow plows and fire trucks in and turn them around is already in place. Exactly. Thank you. Any further discussion on 7A motions? 7A has been made and seconded. And all those in favor, please show by raising your right hand. Seven B. The road design incorporates the construction of grass esplanades planted with street trees separating the sidewalk from the road. The board finds that this design will promote slow travel speeds appropriate to a safe neighborhood. Based on the applicant's professional traffic engineer estimate of eight cut through trips during peak hour and the subdivision road design, the board finds that the road design discourages cut through traffic. The board finds that the addition of the subdivision's traffic to Mitchell Road, which is the only public right-of-way access point, will not result in a decrease in level of service to Mitchell Road or an increase in the accident rate. The board finds that public access to Edgewood Road has been legally extinguished by the City of South Portland by City Council Order Number 85-00-01, dated December 18, 2000. The board further finds that a requirement to install a barrier in the area of Edgewood Road at the municipal boundary line could violate the private access easement rights conveyed by the City of South Portland to the Bullis and Brown properties. Go ahead, second. Second. Finding 7B has been moved and seconded. Are there any discussion? Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm satisfied that we heard uh, uh, a good deal of information and received uh, input on this whole issue of traffic and, and the uh, road, Edgewood Road. Uh, we heard from uh, traffic engineers as well as uh, from many people at the public hearings, and uh, I would uh, uh, in reliance on that, find that, that uh, the findings that there would not be uh, an addition of traffic that would result in any uh, significant change is, is, is accurate. Um, I also would agree that the requirement to install a barrier would cut off uh, appropriate legal rights uh, that were conveyed to two of the properties at the end of that, that road, so uh, I would also agree with that finding. I have a couple, uh, one comment and one question. As a practical matter, um, I believe the nearest fire station um, to this development um, would be the Shore Road Station, and I'd certainly hate to see a concrete barrier erected, um, you know, in between the fire station and the Cape Elizabeth um, homes that are proposed for this new development. Um, I also had a question. Um, in response to Mr. Robert Crawford's letter that we just got tonight, and I read it quickly, um, where he asserts that 
Um, the traffic analysis for the subdivision does not address the use of Red Oak Drive as a connector between Cottage Road and South Portland. I, my recollection of the traffic study was that it did, did look at exit both of traffic onto Mitchell Road and onto Cottage Road. Is my, I don't have the traffic studies in front of me, but is my recollection correct? Or um, There was a letter from Bill Bray, and if you give me a moment, I'll actually dig it up. Thank you. A letter dated February 3rd, 2002, uh, submitted by Bill Bur William J. Bray, PE, and its heading is Traffic Analysis for Edgewood Road. And um, the middle of it uh, talks about the 19 site trips gener generated by your proposed subdivision during the PM peak hour were reassigned to the local roadway system, which includes a through connection to Edgewood Road based upon the following assumptions. Figure two from the September traffic impact studies attached for reference purposes. Uh, one, the five exiting site trips turning right onto Mitchell Road will not alter trip path. The right turn movement onto Mitchell Road with significantly less through traffic is easier than attempting a left turn from Edgewood Road onto Cottage Road. Two, one of the two exiting site trips previously assigned towards Cape Elizabeth Field via Mitchell Road will now use the Edgewood Road connection. Three, 50% of the eight entry trips approaching the site from South Portland will alter their trip path and use the proposed Edgewood Road connection. Four, 50% of the four site entry trips previously turning right from Mitchell Road to the site will now change their trip pattern and use Edgewood Road via Shore Road. Uh, the total number of site trips using the, and that's the number four and then the new paragraph is, the total number of site trips using the proposed Edgewood Road connection is estimated at seven vehicles, and I've got eight here, uh, which is slightly less than half of the total site trips generated by the proposed project in the PM peak hour. And that's basically, it goes on to talk more. Thank you. I would like to make a comment just for the record. I think that through our complete addressing of this issue at our various meetings and the fact that it's almost a moot point at this point that uh, South Portland will probably never open this road, I think that traffic study more than adequately satisfies my concern. I, I did think there was a second letter and I found it. Another letter from William J. Bray dated February 10th, 2002. Re through traffic impacts of proposed roadwood subdivision, dear Mr. Fustashi, I've carefully reviewed the design of your latest proposed subdivision roadway system and based upon that review cannot support the notion that through traffic trips will travel to and from Shore Road via Edgewood Road. 
Presently, any vehicle operator that so desires to connect to or from Shore Road from Mitchell Road have a direct route on Woodland Road. Your proposed subdivision design provides a new road, Blueberry Road, that intersects with Mitchell Road and then intersects at a right angle with another proposed road, Fernwood Lane, and then connects to existing Edgewood Road. I can't understand why any vehicle operator, unless they were lost, would use this alternative route versus the straight shot alternative that presently exists with, Win with Woodland Road. Thank you, Maureen. <clears throat> Any further discussion on finding 7B? Hearing none, I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of finding B? Finding B approved. Any on a sleep? I'll do another one or two. 7C, the board finds that the combination of vegetated Vegetative plantings and wood fence buffer provides an adequate buffer that reduces noise and lighting, separates the subdivision from abutting properties, and enhances the subdivision. In particular, the board finds that the combination of a berm and fencing along with perimeter of the along the perimeter of the subdivision abutting the Charlotte Road properties is appropriate to protect the subdivision lots from headlight wash and delineate the separation between the subdivision and the abutting properties and former road right of way of Charlotte Road. 7C finding has been moved. Do I hear a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll second. Finding 7C has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? There's been a fair amount of discussion over the course of, of this submission about the landscaping and the concern of the people who live in South Portland. And I think that Mr. Fristashi has made a very good faith effort, at least from my standpoint, to try to meet the demands of the people who abut this proposed subdivision by consistently adding to the landscaping plan and putting those ideas on his plans and feel I feel satisfied that the buffering will be as intense as it possibly can be. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd also note that uh, the applicant has, has both stated his good faith intent and put it on the plans that as many of the existing larger trees will be maintained or <coughs> excuse me, preserved during the, the process of, of grading and construction. Um, and I would also note that one of the reasons, in my view, that there's such a concern about buffering is that all the natural and existing buffering on the South Portland lots has been removed to create yards. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't, if we denied the, the new property owners here the same right to do what what they think is appropriate for the yards as long as there is some kind of buffering installed, which this application does include. Thank you. I mean, I, I do believe this is an adequate buffer. Obviously, it's not ideal from the perspective of the South Portland residents, and I don't think that Mr. Charles meant to suggest that they intentionally uh, encroached uh, or extended their lawns into property owned by Mr. Fristacci, but it is what it is, and unfortunately, uh, perhaps many of the uh, trees that might have provided a buffer have been removed over time, perhaps not even by the current residents. Any further discussion? And I'll move 7C to vote. All those in favor of 7C finding, please uh, show by raising the right hand. 7C carries. Do you want to do 7D? Ms. Lowell, may I relieve you? You may. <laughs> I'll begin with 7D. The board finds that no disposal or storage areas are proposed. 7D has been moved. To, do second. I have a second? Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? And I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of 7D show by raising their right hand. 7D carries. Following finding for the board to consider or approve. The board finds that the street layout has, within the limits of the access to the property, avoided any alteration of wetlands to the greatest possible extent. The placement of the roads has also avoided cutting off the proposed open space from an existing protected open space, resulting in a more valuable open space area. The board finds that the vacation of a portion of Charlotte Road and Edgewood Road by the city, by the South Portland City Council order number 85-00 slash 01 
dated December 18th, the year 2000, has limited the developer's opportunities to make the amenities and livability of the subdivision accessible to the adjoining South Portland neighborhoods. Seven E's been moved. Do I hear a second? <clears throat> Seven E's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> One of the appeals of this plan is indeed that the open space that's part of this plan does connect to uh, open space that is uh, to the south of the plan. And uh, we have learned in various workshops that it is uh, a much more productive way to maintain open spaces to have larger patches as opposed to discrete smaller patches that don't connect to one another. So I think this plan adequately addresses that issue. Any other discussion? And I'll raise it to a vote. Finding 7E, all those in favor, please show by raising the right. 7E passes. 7F, the board finds that the majority of the roads are oriented east-west, facilitating access to sunlight for the homes to be built on the site. So I hear a second. Second. 7F has been moved and seconded. Do I hear uh, any discussion? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of finding 7F, please show by raising right hand. 7F. 7G. The board finds that the block lanes do not exceed 1,000 feet. Second. 7G has been moved and seconded. All of, any discussion? I'll move it to a vote. All those in favor of finding 7G, please show by raising the 7G carries. 7H, the board finds that the street names have been approved by the police chief for conformance with E911 policies. Second. 7H has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, show by raising the right hand for finding 7H. 7H carried. 7I, the board finds that the subdivision is designed to conform with the stormwater control ordinance. The board finds that the developer has provided drainage easements and stormwater detention, de detention basins adequate to channel stormwater and to hold post-development flows at or below post-pre-development levels. The board finds that the berm and drainage easements designed adjacent to Charlotte Road to the Charlotte Road area will result in no stormwater from drainage area B, reference sheet number 10, flowing into South Portland. Seven I has been moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Seven I has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? We've uh, had a lot of information on the whole stormwater issue and I think we all know that we've raised uh, questions, others have raised questions, and the uh, stormwater plan has undergone changes in response to the questions, uh, which I feel uh, adequately address all the issues that have been raised. Uh, let me also say that whether stormwater is flowing into South Portland or Cape Elizabeth, it doesn't affect the way I believe the board looks at looks at the issue and doesn't affect the standards that um, we we try to apply and the uh, uh, drainage plan that's in place now I believe for the site and given uh, the uh, large amount of information we have meets the, the goals of uh, uh, of adequately providing for stormwater uh, and, and uh, channeling it appropriately for this, for this development. And I'm satisfied that the stormwater plan as submitted with the conditional uh, approval by the DEP uh, adequately uh, responds to all of the issues that we've heard. I'd like to concur with Mr. Chiraldo and also add that I think the developer has submitted up-to-date 
um, surveys, there was a question of the fact that the stormwater survey was too old, had been done over 10 years ago, and he has submitted information from Sweet Associates, which supports the change that he, the changes that he has made. Jones. This was, was this Peter's motion? Yes. Peter, I'd, I'd like to suggest that you amend your motion to indicate that uh, the last paragraph will result in no stormwater from drainage area A. It, in a previous submission, it was called B, but now actually Charlotte Road abuts area A, so for clarity, we should make sure that it refers to the right part of that plan. I agree. Thank you. Any further discussion? And I'll raise seven I, finding to a vote all those in favor. We show by raising the right hand. Seven I carries. Mr. Chairman, seven J. The board finds that the pedestrian easements located on lots five and six, combined with the open space frontage on Blueberry Road, provide adequate access to the open space. Second. Finding J. 7J has been uh, moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. I don't know if this is addressed further on in the motion, uh, but it's my understanding that, that there also will be a boardwalk installed that will also promote pedestrian access to the open space off of Blueberry Road to the south. That's part of this accident. Right. Any further comment? I'd just add, Mr. Chairman, that. Uh, Although we, we seem to have some, some conflicting input as to whether there should or should not be limitation on access to this subdivision from neighboring towns, uh, I think this plan provides good access to the open space both for Cape Elizabeth residents and for anyone else who's in the area no matter where they originated from. And as Mr. Sherman indicated earlier, a large contiguous area of open space is the best kind to have, and I think this addresses that in, in the appropriate way. Thank you. 7J has been moved and seconded. Uh, can I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of 7J, please be show by raising the right hand. 7J carries. 7K. Finding 7K, the board finds that the area and width of proposed lots is in accordance is in concordance with the open space zoning standards for the RC district section 19-7-2C. The board finds that the side lot lines are substantially at right angles, are radial to road lines. 7K has been moved by our second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of finding 7K, we show by raising the right hand. Finding 7L. The board finds that each lot is connected to a proposed public road. Second. Seven G <coughs> L's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, I'll raise finding seven L to vote. All those in favor, show by raising right hand. Seven M. Seven M. The board finds that the application of the open space zoning standards, section 19-7-2, is appropriate for the design of Blueberry Ridge subdivision, resulting in a compact neighborhood design compatible with the abutting properties and preservation of an open space area contigu contiguous to existing preserved open space. The average lot size of the proposed subdivision is 8,800 square feet, and the average lot size of the abutting South Portland lots is 7,318 square feet. The board finds that over 40% of the gross area of the subdivision is set aside as permanently protected open space due to the application of the open space zoning standards and that at least one third of that open space is not wetland. The board finds that the location of the open space is consistent with protection of wetlands, maintaining open space in large contiguous areas and connecting open space to other open space areas. In this case, the preserved open space adjacent to Rosewood Drive. The board finds that in order to create building envelopes of a size able to accommodate contemporary homes and design a compact neighborhood consistent with the recommendations of the comprehensive plan to promote cluster development 
and consistent with section 19-7-2 in parentheses A in parentheses 2 of the zoning ordinance, the building envelope setback of 50 feet and the right-of-way setback of 75 feet provided for in the open space zoning provisions may be reduced to the minimum side and rear yard setbacks allowed in the RC district. The planning board finds that the creation of building envelopes in an abutting community does not prohibit the planning board from reducing the 50-foot building envelope setback as long as the setbacks of the underlying RC district are met. The planning board further notes that the definition of and restrictions imposed by a building envelope in the Brewberry Ridge subdivision may be more restrictive than the application of any newly created building envelopes in South Portland. Finding 7M has been moved. Do I hear a second? Yeah. Finding 7M has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, a couple of comments. Uh, some of the, the, uh, the commentary we heard during the application review was that we should be requiring larger lots and I think it's, uh, it's appropriate to note at this point that these lots are uh, well larger than the, the abutting lots in South Portland. Uh, certainly the amount of open space that's been set aside exceeds the requirements of the ordinance. And in my view, it is completely consistent and appropriate to use the, the creative approach of applying the underlying district setbacks and not going strictly with the open space zoning, open space zoning setbacks in this case. I'd also further note that the concentration of homes and open space on this, on this application, in my view, are appropriate. And at no time during the discussion did I consider the financial implications of having enough lots to make it viable. My, my votes were always based on what I thought was the best use of the land. Thank you. This is such an important subject that I'd like to take a moment and concur with what Mr. Charles has said. Any other further discussion? So I really want to echo uh, the sentiments expressed and, and re reiterate my comments earlier regarding uh, the, the providing for open space that connects to another area of open space to the south of this plan development. And I think that's very important. I also think this is an important subject and I would like to go on record to agree with what Mr. Charles said. Any further discussion? I'll raise it to vote, finding 7M. All those in favor show by raising their right hand. 7M carries. Mr. Chairman, finding 7N. The board finds that the sidewalks proposed on one side of the street separated from the roads with a grass esplanade, which will be planted with street trees, is necessary for public safety. Second. Seven ends been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor of seven N show by raising their right hand. Seven N carries. Seven O. The board finds that the applicant has, when practical, preserved natural features and trees, and that the subdivision subdivision ordinance does not preclude the removal of trees for development. 7 has been made. Second. Do I hear a second? Second. 7 O's finding is being made and seconded. Is there a discussion? Well, I, I would just add that given the, uh, the various requirements of both having to provide adequate buffering and also to provide adequate stormwater drainage, which sometimes are competing interests, I believe the applicant has tried to address both of those interests and balance them uh, as best as could be uh, given the fact that drainage was necessary and buffering is also necessary and sometimes the drainage plan requires uh, removal of, of some, some trees. So I believe that those competing interests at times have been balanced adequately and I believe we have uh, looked at a sufficient amount of information to uh, satisfy ourselves that the balance presented in the final plan is, is adequate. Any further comments? And I'll raise 7-0 to a vote. All those in favor, 
seven oh finding the show by raising the right hand. Seven oh seven P. The board finds that the site is not located in a vista or view corridor as identified in the visual impact study conducted by the town. The board further finds that the anticipated homes, estimated at an average size of 2,000 square feet, will be of a general size and bulk compatible with the abutting neighborhood, where the average home size is 1,569 square feet. Second. 7P has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of 7P, please show by raising right hand. 7Q, the board finds that the applicant has proposed to preserve over 40% of the land area as open space, which complies with the open space impact fee standard. I have a second. Seven Q has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I'll just add again, Mr. Chairman, that uh, I think this particular tract of land lends itself very appropriately to the use of the open space standard in clustering the houses and, and preserving as much open space as practical. Uh, I'll move it to a vote at this point. All those in favor of seven Q, please show by raising your right hand. 7Q carries. 7R, the board, the board finds that the applicant has submitted deeds conveying the open space to the town of Cape Elizabeth, which entity shall be responsible for maintenance. I hear a second. Second. 7R has been moved and seconded. Do I hear any discussion? Hearing none, I'll move it to a vote. All those in favor of finding 7R, please show by raising the right hand. Yeah. Yeah. 7S, the board finds that the subdivision will be connected to the public sewer system in accordance with the town sewer ordinance. I hear a second. Second. 7S has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I'll move it to a vote. All those in favor, show by raising the right hand. Seven T, the board finds that the subdivision is not located in the floodplain. Second. Seven T has been moved and seconded. Do I hear any discussion? Is there any comments? I'll move it to a vote. All those in favor of finding seven T, please show by raising the right hand. Seven U. 7U, the board finds that the subdivision has met the standards for issuance of a resource protection permit to alter wetlands in accordance with section 19-8-3 of the zoning ordinance. There a second. Second. Just wondering if you want to uh, defer it wrote, uh, voting on that one until you've actually gone through the items below in section 19.8.3 instead of having a, a, a blanket motion on that hold off on that until you get down below so and and move on that one in combination with right postpone moving on that until you've uh, done the section that's listed at the okay. middle of the page no mr. chairman I'd like to table this finding and do we finish with 19-8-3? Go right ahead. 7V. The board finds that no significant wildlife habitats have been identified on the site. The board further finds that locating the proposed open space adjacent to existing preserved open space will enhance the value of both open space areas as wildlife habitat. Second. 7V has been moved and seconded. Do I hear any discussion? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of 7B, show by raising the right hand. 7B, can I 7W, 
The board finds that the individual homes will be numbered in accordance with the town street addressing ordinance. Second. 7W has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of 7W, show by raising the right hand. 7W carries. 7X. 7X. The board finds that the subdivision will provide public water and electricity. I hear a second. Second. 7X has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of 7X finding. 7Y. 7Y. The board finds that based on a memorandum from town manager Michael McGovern dated December 5th, the year 2001, asserting financial capability and the construction of the Rosewood subdivision in Cape Elizabeth, the applicant, the applicant has de demonstrated adequate financial resources and technical capability to complete the project. 7Y has been moved. Do I hear a second? Second. 7Y has moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of 7Y, please show by raising right hand, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be relieved with a note that we return <laughs> to seven you at the appropriate time. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, we'll now go through the resource protection permit standards under section 19-8-3B. Uh, this relates to uh, finding you. Uh, number one, the board finds that the wetland alterations will not obstruct the flow of surface waters and subsurface alterations are not proposed. Resource protection finding number one has been moved. Do I hear a second? Mr. Chairman, I second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I will raise it to a vote. All those in favor of item number one, finding number one under resource protection, show by raising right hand. Thank you. Uh, standard number two, the board finds that no impoundment of surface waters in the wetland area is proposed. Second. Number two has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor of number two, please show by raising your right hand. Number three, the board finds that disturbed areas will be revegetated and the additional impervious surface created by the boardwalk is not large enough to increase surface water flows. Number three has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I would just note, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the boardwalk is certainly a, a, a good addition to the plan for the purpose of access to the open space, and that uh, much of the plan has been configured so that the wetlands are not disturbed and are disturbed to the minimum amount practical. And uh, again, I would submit that this is the appropriate way to use this tract of land. Any further discussion? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of finding number three? Shall be raising right hand. Number four. Number four, the board finds that the wetland alteration will not damage habitat. Second. Second. Four has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion or any other discussion? I'll raise number four to a vote. All those in favor of number four, please show. Number four carries. 
Number five, the board finds that the only structure in the wetland will be the boardwalk, which is designed for use in a wetland. Second. Five is moved and seconded. Any discussion? I do have a question on that one, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the boardwalk is considered a structure. I guess this is for Maureen. I believe uh, there's some fencing at the corner of lot one to delineate the boundary of the lot and the wetland. Is a fence considered a structure? No. Then Specifically excluded in the definition section of the structure. And I have no issue with this finding. Number five has been moved and seconded. All those in favor show by raising the right hand. Number six, the board finds that the amount of wetland alteration will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or groundwater. Where is second? Second. Six has been moved and seconded. Further discussion? Mr. Charles. Mr. Chairman, I think it might be appropriate to make a general comment for the findings that we've looked at under this section and those that we're about to address. That uh, much of my opinion on this is based on the review by the experts, including the town engineer, who's, who's compared the, the plan submittal with the requirements in the ordinance, and uh, put a lot of stock in that review and, and feel comfortable that these findings are accurate based on that. Thank you. For the discussion, all those in favor of Finding number six, show by raising their right hand. Six carries. Number seven, the board finds that no dunes are located in the subdivision. Second. Seven is moved and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, then I'll move it to a vote. All those in favor of number seven. Carries by right. Number eight, the board finds that the amount of wetland alteration will be minimal and will not detract from the aesthetics of the area. Wait a second. Second. Number eight is moved and seconded. The board finds it. Or is there any discussion at this point? No discussion. I'll move it to a vote. Finding number eight. Number nine, the board finds that no buffer is needed as the alteration by its nature will be located entirely in the wetland area. Except for the proposed alterations, the remainder of the wetland is incorporated into the protected open space. Second. Nine has been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll raise number nine to a vote. All those in favor show by raising the right hand. Number 10, the board finds that the applicant has submitted an erosion control plan that includes protection during construction and revegetation of disturbed areas upon completion of construction. Ten is moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll raise it to vote. Approval by right hand. Eleven, the board finds that no discharge of wastewater is proposed as part of the project scope. Second. Eleven is moved and seconded. Any discussion? Raise number eleven to a vote. All those in favor show by raising right hand. Twelve, the board finds that no floodplains are located in the project area. Second. Twelve is moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, raise it to a vote. Those in favor, twelve. Show by raising right hand. Seven, you. Uh, and I think for the record, we'll go back to finding seven, you. Uh, we'll bring that back, which says the board finds that the subdivision has met the standards for issuance of a resource protection permit to alter wetlands in accordance with section 19-8-3 of the zoning ordinance. Second. 7U has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? 
Um, I guess I will uh, echo Mr. Charles's comments. We've uh, heard and, and seen and read a significant amount of information on the uh, resource protection permit uh, and the standards uh, to alter wetlands. <coughs> and we've had the benefit of input from various experts on the subject, including uh, the town attorney and others. Uh, and the uh, standards as I read them and as we have applied them in the past are, are clear. Uh, and I believe that they have been met uh, in this particular case. I would also like to concur with the previous comments. Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, just out of curiosity, I took my file on Blueberry Ridge subdivision and I measured it this evening. It's 14 and a half inches tall. Uh, all the members have reviewed the same information I've had, the correspondence from Abutters, uh, the many minor changes that were the result of comments from Abutters, comments from staff, town engineers, and uh, very comfortable voting on these findings. Thank you. Any further comments on finding 7U? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of 7U show by raising their right hand. 7U carries. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'd like to offer a proposal. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted, and the facts presented, the application of Joseph Rustashi for a final subdivision approval and a resource protection permit for Blueberry Ridge, 19 lot subdivision located off of Mitchell Road, be approved subject to the following conditions. <clears throat> One, that the plans be revised to reflect the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated 10802, and the police chief's comments in his memorandum dated October 1st, 02. Two, that written evidence of issuance of a stormwater permit from the Department of Environmental Protection for the Blueberry Ridge subdivision be submitted. Three, that there be no recording of the subdivision plat until the above conditions have been met by submission of revised plans and information to the town planner. Four, that there be no alteration of the site nor sale of lots nor issuance of a building permit until the applicant has submitted a performance guarantee in an amount acceptable to the town engineer in a form acceptable to the town attorney and approved by the town manager and has submitted executed deeds for the dedicated open space and pedestrian easements in a form acceptable to the town attorney. Final motion has been made. I hear a second. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Joe. Mr. Chairman, I, I fully recognize that with the approval of this subdivision tonight, there are going to be people who are unhappy with the decision. And I would just offer that I, I honestly believe that this board and this applicant have, have taken into account the, the concerns and issues raised by all those who have submitted correspondence and made testimony to this board. And I think have, as much as possible, um, those concerns and comments have been incorporated into the plan. And although there's bound to be some folks who don't like the subdivision when it's constructed, I sincerely hope long term that those folks will live in harmony and become good neighbors. Thank you. Any further comments? Mr. Shum. I do want to uh, express my appreciation to the uh, Butters from South Portland for all the input they have provided. And I know they're most likely not very happy uh, with uh, the approval or uh, apparent approval of this project. I just want to make it clear that the fact that they are from South Portland uh, didn't have any impact on uh, my assessment of the uh, views expressed. There are butters and whether they're from Cape Elizabeth or South Portland was really beside the point. Well, I, I'm satisfied that after a uh, rather long and exhaustive process, uh, that we have, number one, uh, attempted to address concerns that were put before us, and more importantly, number two, uh, that we have uh, examined all of the applicable standards and, and regulations uh, and made sure that in every case 
those standards and regulations uh, have been met with this subdivision application and uh, based on that uh, I believe that we have uh, adequately considered all the relevant issues that we've received uh, significant input so as to consider all the relevant issues and uh, have applied those standards uh, fairly and, and uh, effectively and uh, after reviewing those standards and seeing what's required by the regulations uh, we have no uh, choice but to approve uh, this application as it uh, is warranted. I would like to uh, state that I concur with Mr. Sheraldo's comments and also state that I think that some of the input and some of the requests that were put to us by the abutters and the concerned individuals has ultimately produced, helped the, the developer produce a project that's uh, going to be a very acceptable project and well-liked project in Cape Elizabeth. I feel comfortable with uh, the decision I think we're going to forward tonight. Any further discussion? I'll raise it to a vote. All those in favor of the motion in front of the House, please uh, show by raising your right hand. Carries unanimous. You have a problem. I want to thank the board members for their deliberation and their patience on this. I think when I started several years ago, um, I've gone through six board members. I think Mr. Carter is the only one here. So again, this was a difficult project. Uh, you've got a new, a new ordinance that you dealt with. And uh, I think that uh, what were the, end, the end result is going to be a, uh, a very acceptable and a very um, welcome addition to Cape Elizabeth. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn tonight's public hearing. All those in favor? Second it. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, adjourn. Meeting.